good gentles all, please welcome those loquacious lovers of legends and law. Those versatile viscounts of voluminous verbosity as they portray a panoply of personalities under this preeminent proscenium. Please welcome Mr. Smythe and Mr. Jones. To it makes her mind up to pursue it. She can make her wish come true. It may be awfully hard to do it with imagination, some courage, and determination. If she can conquer all her fears and trepidation, well, then she just might make it through. For all the world is a stage, my friend. Attend and hark if you may hear to lend. And here's one thing on which you can. You're speaking French? Oui. And why are you speaking French? Well, since our story takes place in a small provincial town in France, I thought it'd be a good idea to, you know, set the mood. <laughs> set the mood. Oui. And how long have you been speaking French? Well, what time is it now? That's what I thought. <laughs> Actually, it's time for you to introduce our royal visitor. It is. Oui. To the world, it is with deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you today. And now we invite you to welcome our royal guest. The one! The only! The one and only! Mademoiselle Belle! Bonjour, Mademoiselle Belle! Bonjour, Mr. Jones, Mr. Smythe, and Sir Samuel! Ah, bonjour, and welcome to the Royal Theatre! Why, thank you! I am so excited to be here and help tell my story! As are we! In fact, we shall play most of the roles in your story. I shall pretend to be Gaston. And I shall pretend to be the Beast. And you shall pretend to be Belle. <laughs> but I am Belle. And you That's... will be marvelous. Well, I thank you. I'm sure you'll be marvelous as well. <gasps> Did you hear that? Another rave review and we haven't even begun. And so, we begin. Places, please. A scene in the village. Right. Once upon a time, there was a delightful demoiselle named Belle. And it was on this particular morning that uh, you made your way through your small provincial town. Look oh, here, the hair. Thank you. Indeed, Belle loves books. Faraway places. Magic spells. Daring tools. Heroes in disguise. And happily ever after. Little did Belle know that today would be her lucky day. Hello, Belle. Gaston. Oh, yes, Mr. Jones is pretending. Pretending to be Gaston. I know, it's just that, well, Gaston had much bigger muscles. <laughs> <laughs>
Check! <laughs> All right, let's take it back to my line. Little did Belle know that today would be her lucky day. Hello, Belle! Hello, Gaston. I guess you didn't know that today would be your lucky day. Look fears in town? No. Turkey legs for everyone! No! no! This is the day all of Belle's dreams come true. And what do you know about my dreams, Gaston? Well, I... Actually, Gaston knew nothing about Belle's dreams. All he really knew was... I'm the most eligible bachelor in the village. I'm strong. I'm handsome. I'm derriere. Debonair. Exactly. I make all the ladies swoon. Not all the ladies. Ah, uh, yes, there was one exception. Belle, you're the most beautiful girl in the village, which makes you the best. And don't I deserve the best? <laughs> Belle was this close to getting away when... Belle! Say you'll marry me. I'm sorry, Gaston, but I just don't deserve you. <laughs> well, she's right about that. Wait a minute. Is that a yes? <laughs> no. Oh. But not to worry, there are plenty of fish in the sea. Matter of fact, I know a lovely young lady. Oh. Redhead, she can sing, she can swim. Honestly, she's a real catch. I'll have Belle for my wife! Make no mistake about that! Belle <laughs> returned home only to find that her father was missing! My father is missing. Eternal quest. Fleeing and fright through the forest, she comes upon a dark and mysterious castle. Little does she know she is about to enter the beastly zone. So, so, 
finds out that her father's in the dungeon and offers to take his her father's place and the beast agrees letting her father go as long as Belle promises to stay with him the beast in the castle which is great for the beast because he's so lonely but bad for Belle because who wants to live with the beast but good for the mere and with the Mrs. Potts because maybe she'll break the spell and they can all be human again You see, the beast was once a handsome prince. But because of his selfishness, a spell was cast upon him. And all of us who lived in the castle... <laughs> As for the rose, it too was put under a spell. It continued to bloom until this, the prince's 21st year. As you can see, the petals have begun to fall. But if the beast can learn to love another, and earn her love before the last petal falls, If not, he is to remain a beast for all time. What's the use? She'll never see me as anything but a monster. Perhaps there's a way for her to see the good in you. But how? Aha! To begin with, you must learn to be kind, courteous. You simply must behave like the prince you really are. And fortunately for us, the king of three living experts on prince behavior are with us today. It will never work. Oh, you must try! For all our sakes, you must try!
didn't know better, I'd say Belle had feelings for this beast. Don't you know he'll make off with your children? He'll come after you in the night. You're not safe till his head is mounted on my wall. I say we kill the beast. Who's with me? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. See? Gentlemen. <laughs> Let's take it back to Mr. Smythe's side. I believe it was. Oh. <clears throat> Rawr! Hey! Ah! 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 Every time it comes upon a time at the start I'm kinda happy about it 